वेलकम एवरी वन गुड आफ्टरनून thank you so much uh, for for the parul university for uh, uh, inviting to share knowledge on this uh, great platform and i believe uh, it's it's very good to uh, bridge the gap of knowledge uh, by connecting students with the industrial uh, like knowledge so today i am going to talk about uh, basic concepts of gdnt that is geometric dimensioning and tolerancing and uh, like after this uh, session uh, you would understand like uh, what level of precision we do in engineering like at what level like microns level we uh, work uh, at the engineering level another thing is like function and design intent like whenever you are designing any part then uh, what is your functionality of that part or the what is your design intent that 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 should be very clear types of fits like clearance condition interference that that you will understand and what are their applications and various factors environmental factors temperature and all that what what are those things that affect the parts and after this you will learn like what what are the different uh, uh, parameters in gdnt how gdnt got started its history and we will go through a couple of practical case studies so that after this theoretical knowledge you get some idea like how we can apply gdnt on real world parts and these are the context like index uh, these are different topics covered in today's session so let's start like this this is an example of engineering drawing like when uh, if you want to manufacture any of the part you should have uh, engineering drawing so in this drawing you 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 can see like uh, there are some datums a b uh, defined and there are some tolerance there are some dimensions given so basically when you work in industry uh, when you are preparing any manufacturing drawing uh, you need to define dimensions and geometric gdnt geometric dimension and tolerance so we are talk, going to talk about this so this is one sample how engineering drawing looks looks like so uh, whenever you talk about any surface uh, for e example here you can see a steel uh, ru ruler like it's a scale steel scale uh, and when you zoom in into it like when you magnify its surface you can see on the right side like it's magnified view so even though any object looks flat to us 
our eyes, human eye can see it as a flat, but when you observe under a microscope or when you magnify it, you will observe there are uneven surfaces. Whenever you machine it, like we do subtractive manufacturing, like subtractive methods like CNC or VMC, there is always uh, some deformities you can see on, on the right side magnified view. You, you can never obtain perfectly flat uh, part. You can never get any perfectly flat part using manuf conventional manufacturing techniques. So this is just to give you an idea of how irregularities are there and we need to control them. And that's when GDNT is used to control those, like how much uh, fine this deformity should be. Whether you, should, you want rough surface or you want very smooth surface. We control that using GDNT. So here I have one question for every one of you, like uh, what is Micron? So do you know every, any one of you, like what is Micron? Like when you divide uh, one mm, you can, you can imagine like how much is one mm, one mm. And when you divide it by thousand equal pieces, you get one Micron. So here you can visualize, like you can get an idea, like our human hair, it's it, it, its diameter is around uh, uh, 889, m point, 889, 88 microns. And one micron is, you can see our dot over here. So you can imagine how small is a micron. And in engineering, we, we give tolerances uh, at the micron level. So, so depending on functionality, we define tolerances and GDND at the level of micron. So why do we apply tolerances and GDND? So this is one of the case study. Uh, there, there is an uh, engineering firm where they are manufacturing parts for highly precision uh, optic application. Like whenever there is optic lens and application, uh, you need very, very high precision. So here you can see like datum A is defined on this axis and uh, the total run out that uh, this, this on inside surface should be within this tolerance limit. That, that is, this is an inch, like six, ten thousandths of an inch. So I want this much precision in this part. This surface should be uh, in that range with respect to datum A. So when, when this part was manufactured and then QC was done, uh, what the company did was they measured, like they assumed the datum A uh, with respect to this face. Like you can see the diameter that is highlighted in red. They considered that face and then they uh, uh, qualified the part. The part was uh, uh, accepted and then given to the final client. But uh, what actual was uh, requirement was that uh, you can see the front surface, like front diameter. Uh, the actual application was uh, with respect to the first diameter of this part. So when, when the end user received this part, uh, when they tried to install it into their assembly, the assembly got failed. Why? Because uh, the company which manufactured, they considered the first diameter that is uh, having the larger length and the real length that was required was the last one. You can see over here in the right, right hand side. And due to this silly mistake, uh, there was a loss of $8 million. Uh, so this is where uh, GDNT understanding comes handy. Like uh, you can save uh, lots of cost and uh, you can deliver the uh, design and deliver the part with right intent. Uh, actually, the mistake was like the engineering drawing that should have uh, defined this datum A using this first diameter on the right hand side. When you define this uh, datum A with the right hand side diameter, uh, that, that shows like this axis is formed with the help of this uh, right hand side diameter. And on the first left hand side, first image, you can see uh, data may is defined on axis. So this, this causes the confusion. You can't de define 
this axis, like all the three diameters has different orientation of their axis. As I mentioned, like there is no way that we can get perfect round shape. Uh, so each and every diameter has different uh, shape at microscopic level. So with use of GDNT, uh, you can see the last like left hand side of the bottom corner, like uh, when you define data A on the uh, right hand side diameter, that is when uh, the right design intent is conveyed. So this is where GDNT comes into play. So there are different uh, factors affecting the size and shape of parts. Why, why we are getting, why we don't get the perfect part? Why we get deformities at microscopic level? Why? Because there are many uh, factors like temperature, uh, the tooling which is used to cut the part, uh, there are vibrations in CNC and VMC, uh, the, the feed rate at which the part is being manufactured, uh, there, there are many other factors like heat. So these all factors are inevitable and we need to uh, control the form of part and that's when the GDNT is used. So this is an example like uh, the part, this is conventional uh, drawing uh, where GDNT is not used. You can see the, the part has dimensions, drawing has dimensions of plus and minus and no GDNT is used. So you can expect uh, when this part is manufactured, uh, it does not have a uh, perfect refined shape. And when you, this is exaggerated view, uh, like when you see in a microscope, the surface is uh, slant, it's not perfectly vertical or flat. So, so when you don't use CDNT, like you use con conventional process of dimensioning, you get such type of parts. But when you use GDNT, like you can see uh, some of the symbols like perpendicularity, datums, uh, profile tolerance, so position tolerance. So when you use such type of uh, GDNT symbols and you control, you get the perfect shape according to your requirement. So when they, does this GDNT start? Like uh, during the World War II, uh, there was one, uh, like person like named as Stanley Parker who like who identified like when the bombs were manufactured uh, there were some of them were rejected so when when he observed like those rejected parts could actually be accepted like due to our conventional process we are rejecting them so let's see how does that work like con conventional process versus uh, GDNT so here is an example like uh, a study. Uh, this is an example where I want to fit the screws. Like there are bolts with threads. I want to fit like fit them into the holes. You can see there are four holes in the counter part, and I want to uh, fit these bolts into that those holes. So uh, this is how uh, uh, like the drawing of the counter part, like the square. Uh, piece and it has four holes. We have given plus or minus uh, uh, tolerancing scheme over here. We have given the plus or minus dimensioning. So what happens is that uh, on the right hand side you can see uh, there is a tolerance zone uh, uh, form that is a square shape. So for example for 45 dimension plus or minus 0 0.05 uh, if, if if I receive the center of this uh, hole within that limit, like if the center of hole falls between this region, anywhere between this region, I will accept that part. If this uh, hole uh, center is outside of that square region, I will reject that part. So that is how the conventional uh, dimensioning system works. Uh, this is the GDNT uh, dimensioning system. Like you can see here, uh, we, we have given the basic dimensions and profile, like uh, position tolerance is given to this uh, hole. So when you give this position tolerance, uh, my my like the tolerance limit shape converts to circular. You can see over here the circular shape. Uh, uh, is formed with this position tolerance. So when my whole center falls in this region, I will accept all those parts. 
So what is difference between uh, this uh, recti uh, square shape and the circular shape? Let's understand that. So on the left side image, you can see my the manufactured part, the whole center, all those red dots are different case scenarios. So if my whole center falls in this uh, red highlighted dots, I will accept all those parts. And if uh, my uh, center of hole is outside the square shape, the tolerance zone, tolerance limit, uh, I will reject th those parts. So you can see in the square shape, uh, three, three of the uh, centers are the three red dots are outside the tolerance limit that is square in the conventional uh, system. I will, this th out of five parts, three will be rejected. That's where GDNT plays an uh, important role. Like if I imagine, like uh, if you imagine like that rightmost corner, if, if my whole center falls on the rightmost corner, if I can accept that part, uh, why can't I accept this, this, this red dot uh, on the bottom right hand side of the image? You can see it falls under the circular image. Our bolts are circular, our hole is circular. So definitely we can accept those three parts. So, so previously in the conventional system, uh, we were rejecting such type of parts which are outside of square uh, tolerance zone. But actually, if you accept those parts like which are into circular zone, your, your part will uh, fit into counterpart. You can accept those parts. So with the application of GDNT, we can get the circular tolerance zone and uh, we can accept more parts and reduce the loss, loss of those rejection of parts. So that's where uh, uh, GDNT is very important. So you can see, as I mentioned, I mean, with the conventional system, uh, we get plus or minus like square shape zone and uh, with the GDNT, we get circular tolerance acceptance zone, so we can get more acceptable parts and reduce our loss. So there is one standard like ASME Y14.5, uh, we define each and every terminology with uh, GDNT and most of the manufacturing organizations, they follow this Y14.5 standard. Uh, now let's talk about some basic uh, rules uh, of GDNT and drawing. Uh, say, for example, when you when you are designing a part, uh, you should ensure each and every dimensions are uh, mentioned on on that drawing. Uh, there should not be any missed dimension or multiple dimensions. There should be only one dimension and. Uh, each and every feature should be exactly defined, like all the dimensions should be covered only once. Uh, except reference, uh, MMC or LMC, all the dimensions have uh, some or the other tolerance. That is, as I said, uh, we can't manufacture a perfect part. So each and every shape form has some irregularities and we define them using uh, acceptable tolerance zones. Uh, dimension and tolerancing should be complete. All the dimensions should be defined, well defined. Uh, we, we should be careful in using reference dimension. There should not be any more multiple dimension or less dimension. Exact dimension should be given in the drawing. Uh, the dimension should be very clear. Uh, the aesthetics of drawing very should be very clear. Why? Because uh, as an engineer, as a design engineer, uh, your language is the drawing. So when you want to manufacture a part, how do you communicate with the machinist? Suppose uh, uh, you, you want to, like you are sitting in a design office and the machinist is on shop floor. So how do you communicate with them? So with the help of manufacturing drawing. So this is your language. GDNT is one of your uh, language in communication with the machinist. Uh, when you see this uh, 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 perpendicular lines, uh, by default, you assume like uh, they both are 90 degree apart. Uh, all the dimensioning is assumed like uh, they're considered uh, at 20 degrees Celsius because as I mentioned, like temperature plays an important role in uh, 
defining the irregularities of the part. All the dimensions are uh, like considered at free state. Like if, if I, for example, there is an O-ring that is a rubber type part, I can stretch it or I can compress it. So it, when I stretch or compress, its shape changes. So, so this is very important. Like uh, the part should be in free state uh, when you are measuring the dimensions. All the tolerances apply in all the uh, width, length, and height. Uh, all the feet, all the sides, three dimensional of the part. There are more examples uh, when you see, like, or visit the y ASME Y fourteen point five standard. You will get uh, many different examples and how to use uh, GDNT. Uh, that was one part. Now coming to the second part, as I mentioned, uh, there are three key, three th key important things. Uh, now I would ask you everyone to listen very carefully. Like when you are working as a design engineer, uh, three three major three Fs they they play a ma major role. Like one is fits, form, and function. So fits are clearance, transition, interference. Forms are straight, flatness, uh, circularity, eccentricity, and function. Function is the design intent, like how your part uh, will function in the assembly. So let's talk about fits first. One is clearance fit. Uh, so here you can see an example of pump uh, impeller within the casing. So there are bearings. You can see like the fluid comes uh, and there is a lit arrow, arrows are shown over here. The main design intent or the function that should be followed here is uh, the shaft and impeller should rotate and my casing is stationary. So, uh, so I want to minimize the fluid loss uh, from casing towards the shaft. Uh, you can see there is very narrow passage uh, in the bearings. So in order to satisfy my function, that is the impeller and shaft should rotate, uh, I, I need to provide a clearance fit. There should be a clearance between the impeller and the casing. So that is where the clearance fit uh, uh, comes into the picture. Uh, next example is of transition fit. Uh, so here you can see a shaft and the stator winding. Uh, where, which is used in a motor. So my intention or the function over here is uh, the stator uh, should should be coupled with the shaft uh, with a uh, slightly tight fit. Like it should slice slide on it easily with uh, little force on it. So it should not slip on shaft, uh, but it should not also be very tight on shaft. Like it should be. Uh, easily move, uh, slide on the shaft with uh, little force. Little force should be applied. Uh, it should be mandatory to apply little force when you are uh, doing the assembly of shaft with this stator. So that's where uh, transition fit comes into picture. It's bit transition fit is like between uh, clearance fit and interference fit. The third one is interference fit. Uh, so the function, where, when I will use this interference fit, so uh, you can see here the uh, bearings are fitted uh, into the housing, bearing housing, and the shaft is also coupled with ID of bearing. So, uh, so my requirement over here is once the bearings are fit into housing, it should not move. It should be tightly fitted into housing. Uh, so, so in, in order to achieve that functional requirement, what I'll do is I will provide an interference fit between housing as well as the bearing. So my bearing OD, the diameter of bearing should be larger than housing ID, the housing hole bore. Uh, that should be smaller and uh, the our OD, that is bearing OD should be larger. And if I talk about how much uh, tight the fit should be, uh, it should be based on my experience uh, that comes 
on an average between 10 microns to 15 microns. Between 10 to 15 microns, the bearing should fit tightly into the housing. So that will ensure uh, uh, the, that, that will ensure the rigidity of bearing in the housing. So these are three types of fits that, that you frequently use while designing the parts. Uh, that is clearance, transition, and interference uh, ba basis on the design intent or the function of the part. So coming back again, like uh, as I mentioned, uh, we work at the micron level. Uh, that is the precision level where the engineering comes into picture. Uh, so you can see how much uh, uh, the size of micron is compared to human hair. Uh, and I. Uh, if, if I want to give you an idea, uh, these are some of the examples of uh, subtractive manufacturing machines that is CNC, VMC. So with uh, CNC, we receive around uh, 25 to 30 microns precision. Uh, you can get uh, surface finish, uh, which is uh, very accurate up to 25 to 30 microns. And if you want very high uh, precise uh, surface, you, you need to go for the grinding or lapping process where you get uh, less than uh, 20 micron surface finish that is very high uh, precise. So here is a chart that gives you an idea uh, of different uh, sub like machinery process like lapping, grinding, honing, electro polish, uh, sand casting, like what level of surface finish that you acquire using different manufacturing process. So you can see say, with the casting process, you can see over here, you get very uh, rough surface. And if you go towards the electro polishing, you can see you get very high uh, surface finishing in micrometers. Uh, now going towards the, like how do you use GDNT? Like in what, uh, order like you should uh, use GDN. So for example, if I want to place a hole, if I want to create a hole in a, uh, this uh, rectangular surface, uh, what I need is the size of hole, what is the diameter of hole that, that I need to define for diameter and the depth. And next is location, uh, where from the X and Y axis where the hole will be located. Third is I will define the orientation, like it is perpendicular to bottom surface or how much angular it should be. And the last but not the least, that is uh, form, like how much uh, precise the uh, uh, form of the uh, this uh, hole should be, like it should be very smooth or very rough. So this all we can define using tolerance and GDNT. So you need to follow this uh, uh, this order, like first define size, then define location, then orientation. And if you require very precise form, then only you can go with uh, form uh, refinement. Like the, the form refinement should be the last if it's a requirement. So let's see how, uh, uh, let's see with an example what I mean by form uh, refinement. So here, uh, just imagine like uh, there are two different applications you, where you want to manufacture a mirror. So one application is uh, optic system. Uh, the, the company manufacturing optic system, they require a mirror. And another uh, application is uh, mirror that is used in our day-to-day -day bathroom. So where do you think uh, high precision is required? Uh, in which application uh, the functional requirement is very precise. So obviously my answer would be uh, optic system. Like optic systems, like we, we, we require very high precision. So the, when we are creating a manufacturing drawing of the glass, uh, we need to define very high surface finish from the, for the uh, glass. So that may so definitely the process would be either lapping, grinding, uh, and we, we get very high surface finish, and our function is satisfied in that case. But in another application where where I'm uh, using glass for my bathroom, 
um, my function is like I need to see my face or anyone wants to see their face. So even if uh, if there is some deformities or minor uh, uh, minor uh, roughness in the surface of the uh, mirror, th th that might be ex acceptable compared to optic system. So mirror used in bathroom, uh, maybe we can uh, define the casting manufacturing process and then polish the uh, mirror surface. So when I compare these two functions, one is optic system and another is mirror into the bathroom. Definitely, I, I would define higher precise GD in optic in the mirror, which is used for optic system. So this is just to give you an idea, like basis on your function, you define the tolerance GDNT and you then refine them as you uh, understand the function of the part or the application of the assembly. So how do you control this all uh, uh, different factors like size, location, orientation and form? There are uh, all the symbols you can see on the screen. Uh, these are all the symbols used in GDNT. So by application, understanding all the symbols and by understanding the function, you can definitely apply uh, in the uh, engineering drawings and save the cost. So I hope you get an idea of the how important is the function uh, and how you can apply GDNT. Uh, now some basic terms like uh, datums, feature of size or the features, what is difference between them? Uh, control, what is control, feature control frame? And there are some material conditions. These are the, uh, there, there is very deep, uh, we can go into very deep in each and every topic, but uh, Yes, this is a very initial level uh, webinar. Like we will just have a brief overview of the, all these four terms. So datums, uh, uh, if I talk about datums, uh, here you can see a square part. Uh, if I talk, how will you measure this part? Uh, what is your reference? So datums are basically uh, perfect planes. Uh, with, from where you can measure these dimensions of this part. Like if I say like 60 mm, uh, that, that is a width and the breadth is uh, 60 mm. So here I have taken reference of this left side face and bottom face, these two fa faces are taken as reference uh, to measure this dimension. But as I mentioned, like no, uh, part is uh, manufactured perfectly. If you exaggerate the uh, or magnify the surface, you will def every time you will find there is always a de deformities at the microscopic level. So, if I use a one-year caliper, maybe there, there, there is a possibility. Like I, I measure uh, surface from this cavity, like this bottom part, and. Uh, another time when I measure the top hole, that, that will be on a top height. And you can see it, irregularities are there. So definitely each and every time when I measure the dimension, there will be a difference. So how do we uh, define or create a good system so that we get minimum errors? So that's when the datum comes into the picture. Uh, so in GDNT, we define uh, datum features like uh, datum A, you can see over here is defined for this bottom face. Uh, datum B uh, is the another bottom face. Uh, datum C is the side face of this part. So uh, what, what I do to control the deformities? As you, as you as I go back, you can see when I magnify the surface, it is irregular. So here is an example like uh, flatness. You can see a symbol of flatness over here on the right hand side of the image. And uh, the 0 0.05 is in the inches like imperial system. So I want uh, this face to be uh, very precise. Bit uh, it should be, it should fall between 0 0.05 uh, parallel planes. So it, 
if the surface is uh, larger than that, if the deformity is larger than that, I would reject that phase. So this is how GDNT controls the surface uh, finish or the surface uh, irregularities. How this is how we uh, control the precision of the surface. So uh, datums are actually datum planes are virtual. Uh, you can't get a perfectly flat uh, surface. So practically in uh, factories we use the surface plates like that are made up of granites. Uh, we place our part, our manufactured part on the, those uh, surface table or surface plate and then we measure uh, those parts with respect to that surface plate. So we assume or uh, we consider those surface plate or surface table as perfectly flat, uh, uh, surfacely, uh, perfectly flat surface. So these are examples uh, of the data feature which are defined on the part. So when you consider about the part, we define the data feature on it. So this data feature, for example, data A, that will be placed on surface plate A for the first. The first engagement of this part would be with the surface plate that is data A. Data A will engage or be placed on the table for the first time. And then I will engage or touch the datum B of this part with the uh, perpendicular face on my surface table. So these are different examples of datum feature. Now, what is features and feature of size? So there are different features like surface, keyways, uh, edges, holes. These are all the features and the features the dimension that you can measure. See, I can, uh, for example, I can take vernier calipers, and you can see in the image uh, there, there is a slot. I can measure the dimension that is shown as 75.44. So when I can measure any dimension, that means it's a feature, feature of size. In in our GDT terms, we def, we call them all the dimensions that we can measure. They are known as feature of size. Uh, here is an example of feature control frame uh, where you define the first one is type of geometric tolerance. Next is geometric uh, symbol uh, that is tolerance on shape. Uh, what is the value that you want to define for that shape? And at the last, there are data. Uh, data features that is primary, secondary, and tertiary, A, B, and C. So whenever you are creating an engineering drawing, you will often see such type of feature control frames. So this is how uh, the nomenclature of feature control frame looks like. Uh, these are different types of feature control frames. Uh, uh, there, there are two material conditions like uh, in GDNT. Uh, one is uh, maximum material condition and another is uh, least material conditions. So uh, whenever I don't define any condition like MMC or LMC, uh, that applies that is uh, the part is uh, regardless of any feature size. So here you can see uh, feature control frame uh, uh, with uh, material condition. So you can see like the position tolerance is defined over here uh, with the diameter symbol 0 0.4 is the value and the circle that is written as M and circle that is the material condition that is MMC and the last three like A, B and C that are data uh, feature planes. So. So this, these are the three, uh, so th this is, you will oftenly see on the engineering drawings uh, when the maximum, minimum material conditions are defined. And these are the advanced level topics uh, which require some more time. Uh, 
So as I mentioned, like these are the symbols of uh, maximum material conditions and least material condition, MMC and LMC. And RFS is regardless of feature of size. So now let's go to uh, basic rule one and rule two of GDNT. So there are, in, if you go into the ASME Y14.5 standard, uh, in, in it you will find basic two, two rules. So what are these, uh, basically these two rules of GDNT? So first rule that, that defines uh, that uh, if you, if you give a uh, dimension with a tolerance in a part and no geometric di dimensions are defined, then the form of the part is controlled using those uh, dimension limits. So let me uh, explain you with an example of a drawing. Uh, let's go to the initial drawing that I shared with you. So here uh, you can see, uh, let's understand this drawing. Uh, this is a part of bore cap. And as I mentioned in the rules, like th there are no dimensions which does not have any tolerance. So each and every dimension will definitely have one or the other tolerance. So if you see uh, on the right hand side, the detail B, uh, you, you must be wondering like uh, 0.25 uh, dimension has a tolerance of negative, like plus zero zero and my, the tolerance is on the negative side. And uh, if you see on the section A, uh, there is one another dimension 0 0.250, there is no tolerance on it. So how is it possible? So I would say like uh, when, when there are no tolerance defined, you, you must look on the uh, drawing table, bottom uh, table of the any engineering drawing. So there are three, you can see like after decimal point, there are three digits on the uh, 0.25 dimension in the section AA. So what does that imply is, uh, uh, if I look at the bottom table, uh, there are some of the decimals and uh, side like tolerance limit defined. You can see like if there is one decimal, there is one point point one tolerance plus or minus point one. If there are two decimal, there are point zero two tolerance applies to that dimension. And if there are three decimal, then point zero one zero plus or minus point zero one zero is applied. So in this case, point two five zero. We will consider the tolerance zone to be plus or minus point zero one zero. So this is how each and every dimension will definitely have one or the other tolerance. Uh, now coming back uh, to, to coming back to the uh, rule number one, uh, what does it define? You can see uh, here is a perpendicularity. The datum C is perpendicular to datum B with 0 0.002 value, but uh, uh, if I talk about 0.25 in section A, 250 dimension, there is no uh, geometric tolerance defined. Or if I talk about uh, uh, diameter, that is 1.560, uh, I'm not controlling or defining an, any form refinement, like no perpendicularity, circularity, or anything uh, on 1.5 diameter. Uh, so in that case, uh, if I talk about 0.125 width, and in that case, open tolerance is uh, implemented. So for 1 to 5 width uh, of this uh, drawing, I will consider 0 0.010 tolerance. And that controls the form, the surface roughness of this uh, part. Uh, and in, 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 like in another scenario, if I have defined the flatness, or if I had control that uh, with uh, with a flatness tolerance of 0 0.005, in that case my uh, form form refinement would be 0 0.005. The, the part should be following that refinement. So in this case, in current drawing, we don't have any GDNT applied for 0.125. So I'll 
I'll refer to the tolerance limit 0 0.010 uh, for the foam. That is what the rule one uh, states in the Y14.5 geometric dimension and tolerancing standard. And what is rule two? Now coming back to rule two, uh, as we discussed, there are three uh, basic uh, conditions that is MM, MMC, LMC, or RFS. So what does rule two states? So you can see feature control frame at the bottom of the page, like a rule two, like this position tolerance point two, diametrical tolerance limit, and ABC are the datum difference. So if I don't uh, define MMC or LMC, uh, what does that mean is by default, RFS is applied regardless of feature of size. So that is what the rule two states. So this is just for your information, like there are two rules, rule one and rule two in uh, ASME Y14.5 standard. So uh, now let's move to practical example. So this, these are all the theoret theoretical concepts uh, which I wanted to convey before uh, we move to practical example. So what did we learn in theoretical uh, theoretical knowledge was uh, whenever we manufacture any part, it is not perfect. There are always some of the other deformities and uh, to control those deformities, we apply GDNT. Uh, another thing is uh, 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 when we want to measure a part, we, the QC department in a factory, they want to measure the parts, they require data references. So data A, B, and C are defined uh, while, uh, while creating the engineering drawings. And if you have knowledge of uh, the limitation of CNC machines or the tools, how much uh, worn out the tools are, if you have knowledge about all this manufacturing process, how much uh, surface finish or how much accuracy that we get in each and different types of process like lapping, grinding, CNC machining. If you have all, all of you have knowledge of all these different factors, uh, I think you will be able to save a lot of cost in industry and you, you will be able to de design and manufacture very good parts uh, whenever, you, whenever you work in uh, product design uh, field. So this is what the conclusion was. And now let's move to uh, practical case study. So here, uh, I hope uh, uh, like with this case study, I wanted to convey uh, whatever the things that we learn in uh, theoretical concepts, uh, how we would be applying uh, when we are designing a part. So you can see there is a shaft uh, on the left side that is in blue color. Uh, in the middle, there is spindle and it is uh, transferring the rotational movement uh, to a wheel. Maybe it's a flywheel uh, that is coupled with the sh a spindle with a bolt. And also spindle is coupled with the shaft with uh, two bolts you can see over here. So my what, whenever I see uh, any assembly, like the first question should be, what is the function of this part? And uh, when I'm, uh, whenever I am designing or defining GDNT uh, for each and every part in assembly, uh, I should be aware about the design intent or the function of the part. So if I question here, what is the uh, function of this part? So the answer would be, uh, the function is to rotate the shaft, like the, the shaft is a transmission medium, shaft and spindle, they both are transmission medium. And I want to rotate the wheel uh, with the help of some input rotational power. So there might be a motor connected to shaft, shaft is connected to spindle and spindle uh, transfers the motion of rotational movement to this wheel. So my basic uh, design intent is to transfer the um, rotational motion of the wheel. So, uh, if I talk about creating a drawing uh, for the spindle, so I can see over here the spindle is connected to the shaft uh, that is 
one of the one is the face the, you can see the bolts there are two holes into which the bolts are fixed and uh, the spindle is the spindle larger face that will uh, come into contact of this shaft uh, that is where the bolts will tighten when the bolts will tighten the spindle face that is the first one that will come into contact with the shaft uh, face so the first uh, uh, phase that comes into contact with both the parts that is what i will define as datum a so datum a is the uh, datum feature datum feature plane uh, in the spindle uh, that comes in contact for the first time uh, uh, with the shaft so this phase will ensure my spindle is perpendicular to the shaft's face. Uh, so that is why we define datum A to that face. Uh, now the next thing is uh, you can see the diameter. The shaft has a bore in the middle and spindle uh, OD like a spindle I will call as shaft. Uh, spindle I will call as the OD of the spindle and the shaft ID that is you can see the bore in the shaft uh, that is the next engagement the second level engagement so that will also uh, control the alignment of the spindle the spindle axis will be in alignment with the uh, shaft axis with the help of that second level engagement so that is why I define datum B uh, you can see the diameter that is on the left hand side, uh, 59.99, that is the diameter of OD of spindle that will uh, connect with uh, shaft ID, the bore ID of the shaft. So that is the second level engagement, that's why I'll define it as datum B. Now uh, once I have uh, defined datum A and B, uh, now the next, uh, next level will be refinement of uh, my foam uh, as we looked at SLRF principles size location orientation and foam uh, my size is defined orientation is defined uh, uh, orientation is uh, we will see how it is defined in the next slide and how we refine the foam so data A you can see over here uh, I want to control the flatness of that face by 0 0.08 inches. So my first face will come into contact with the shaft. I want to make sure it uh, it engages with the uh, spindle engages with the shaft. Uh, that face should be very uh, the face should be very smooth, and uh, the variation should be very least. So with the help of uh, uh, you can see flatness GDNT. This is a flatness. Uh, you can see on data A that is defined as 0 0.08. So flatness uh, geometric tolerance we have used over here to refine the flatness of that face uh, which we have defined as data A. And now coming to data B, uh, what my requirement is my spindle should be perpendicular, the spindle center axis should be perpendicular to my datum A. The datum A face should be perpendicular to spindle uh, axis. So my spindle axis is defined uh, basis on this diameter, that diameter 59.99. So that I have defined as datum B. And uh, for GDNT, I have used uh, uh, perpendicularity geometric tolerance my uh, my axis should be perpendicular to this planar surface so first what i will do is i will uh, refine the planar surface because that is what will engage uh, first with the shaft and once that engagement is done uh, the next level is datum b so I will define the perpendicularity in datum B uh, to be zero at uh, maximum material condition. And uh, later, uh, once I have defined datum A and B, uh, I will use those two references to define each and every other uh, 
feature of this part. So you can see um, for the holes, uh, there are four, four holes, you can see four into 17 uh, inch diameters, equally spaced. I have defined position tolerance with reference to datum A and B. So my primary objective is first to understand the functional requirement, then basis on the functional requirement, I will define datum A as well as datum B. And once I have defined datum A and B, I can uh, uh, move over to defining uh, all the other features. I can apply more GDNT to each and every feature. One is uh, position feature is applied to these holes. Uh, the diameter, the front diameter uh, that has position tolerance. Uh, other pro you can see other GDNT are profile tolerance like this. I want to uh, control the profile of, of this uh, 28.3 dimension. So this is how uh, we can control uh, all the other features with respect to data A and B. Uh, now, coming back, back recalling the uh, first example that we, when we started this presentation. So you can see over here how the axis is defined. Like in this drawing, uh, we have used 59.99 dimension to define the axis of this uh, spindle. Now coming back uh, to recalling that uh, uh, first uh, like example. The mistake that we saw was the data may was defined on this axis. So when the machinist sees this uh, drawing, uh, he would be confused like uh, uh, which diameter he has to consider while uh, checking this or maintaining 0 0.006 uh, run, total run out uh, of this part. So in this case, what mistake the machinist did, uh, he assumed uh, uh, the left side diameter and he maintained the machining profile of this inner hole, uh, considering the left side diameter. Uh, instead, the requirement, the functional requirement of the company, the optics manufacturing company, the part that was required by the company was that uh, the axis <coughs> The diameter should be controlled uh, based on the right side and uh, the OD of this part. So you can see the red highlighted on the right side. Uh, that OD of the uh, part should uh, control the uh, total run out of the ID on the left side. So that was a requirement and uh, the functional requirement and design intent, uh, but the error uh, cost due to the wrong defining of this data may uh, costed around 8 million to the company uh, and all the parts were rejected as, uh, uh, as this 0 0.006 was not um, uh, complied with a reference to a first right side diameter. So actually the drawing should have been uh, like this, like data may should be defined with respect to right most OD that is 0.8423 you can see over here. Uh, that defines the axis uh, of this part. Uh, so uh, I would say this, all the three diameters OD, all the three has different axis at microscopic level. So when you are, uh, 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 designing any part, uh, 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 when you are designing any of the part, you need to consider the microscopic level. This is where the engineering precision comes uh, into the picture. So I would go back uh, uh, what what we learned today, uh, like uh, all those points. Again, I will recall back. Uh, first one is like importance in the level of precision in engineering. Like we work as an engineers, we work at the level of microns. Uh, whenever you're defining tolerance or making any parts, we work at the precision of microns. That is the, if you divide one mm into thousand parts, that is the level of microns. Uh, another thing very important is uh, you need to understand the function or the design intent of any part or any assembly or any 
any product that you are designing whenever you are designing any part assembly or any uh, product you should always uh, thoroughly understand the functional requirement uh, in that uh, the case study that we saw for the lens the, where there was a loss of 8 million dollars the machinist uh, should uh, should have question uh, uh, question the company like what is the functional requirement of the part but there are some limitations when we are working as a design engineers uh, we can't go to this like we can't be like free in frequent contact with the machinist so we use engineering drawings to convey the design intent so engineering drawings are our language so you should make sure that you understand the gdnt and language properly otherwise uh, th there will be er errors will be created and that will cause into loss so always understand the function and design intent before creating engineering drawings there are three types of fits based on function there are three fits that is clearance transition and interference uh, there are various factors affecting the parts like temperature, tool, uh, wear. Uh, so, so no part uh, uh, manufacturer is ever perfect. I, I guarantee you that you take any process, you will definitely find any deformities uh, once the part is manufactured. No part is perfectly uh, perfect, like there is no dimension perfect. These are the factors like environmental factors that affect it. Uh, we studied the history of JDNT and why do we use it. And at the end, we saw one practical case study uh, where we defined how to define datum A, B, and later other JDNT are applied. So these are very important aspects. I believe uh, you got a very good idea like uh, uh, through this session. And uh, uh, whenever you are designing any part, you, you should consider all these aspects uh, into the picture. And I would like to thank uh, uh, all these uh, uh, references, like from where uh, uh, where I, I would I was able to get some uh, practical examples and uh, reference manufacturing drawings. I thank all these references. Uh, and thank you so much, everyone, uh, for patient, patiently listening to this session. I hope uh, you gained some knowledge, uh, some like uh, some idea, like uh, whenever you are designing any parts, what are the important criteria you need to see. And if you want to connect with me, uh, this is my LinkedIn profile. Uh, uh, you can see, you can directly connect with me and. Uh, uh, I would be happy uh, uh, like if you if you have any requirement of internship or maybe if you have any questions uh, when you are studying like I would be happy to answer them please reach out to me on LinkedIn message me on LinkedIn uh, you can uh, connect with me uh, I would be happy to answer your queries or maybe uh, connect with you in my network for any job opportunities or any internship opportunities. Uh, thank you so much, uh, everyone, uh, for joining this session. I hope uh, you gained some knowledge, and I appreciate the uh, entire team of Parul University for arranging such type of seminars and webinars uh, for the betterment of society and the uh, upgrading the education of the students. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, and wish you a great day ahead. Thank you so much. Sir, for this wonderful topic that is GDNT and so much new things and new design aspects are in the GDNT. Yeah. Uh, Snehal sir, our actually will say something about you. Snehal sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, 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 yes sir. I think due to some internet connectivity issue, Sinhal sir just left the meeting. Uh, I think it's not, okay. Not an issue. That's fine. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for this wonderful uh, topic that you learned.
uh, today. Our students will get better opportunity regarding this. And if there is anything, then we will call you for internship regarding this. Sure, definitely. You can reach out to me, definitely. Yeah, thank yes, you so yes. much. Thank you so much. Sir.